Okay, so I've had my Big Ode Master for a, over a year now. Um, I originally bought it to use as a, a trail wheel after getting into single track um, with my S18. And the hope was what the, was that the Master would, would give me the extra power needed and talk um, to, to really get make the most of the the trails near me near where I live so unfortunately it never really in its stock form never really delivered due to the the suspension really it's just too too soft as stock too you know you have to just pump it up to crazy pressures to stop bottoming out so the stock linkages weren't any good um, so was quite a quick upgrade to the uh, Kuba linkage with a uh, RockShox um, Monarch uh, air shock and that improved things quite a bit stopped the bottoming out and made it actually um, possible to, to do the trails without bottoming out all the time but again it was uncomfortable and um, you know drops were, were really harsh and uh, any hard hits just really were quite painful because of the, the the short travel on the on the master suspension which is probably about 70 millimeters in reality I think they say 80 but it's less than that once you actually measure it and take into account the end stops so it was never really good enough and Ah, oh, got to this point, you know, in the last had it for a year and was disillusioned. Wanted was looking at some of the new wheels coming out, um, the S22 Pro and the uh, Bagode Extreme, and was gonna buy one, but I thought, you know, the the reality of them is that the the smaller wheel I don't think is really an improvement for off-road riding it's okay if you've got smooth trails but if you've got any technical stuff with roots and stones and things it's going to make it worse really um, you may have a slight improvement in uh, torque but that is going to be um, insufficient to outweigh the benefits of having a bigger wheel I think and the, the Bagode Master's got huge torque anyway I've never reached the limit with it so I decided to try and improve the suspension travel um, of the Bagode Master and trying to achieve something more like the travel you get with an S22, S22 Pro. So uh, I thought I'd make a quick video of um, the, the modifications I made. It's quite significant. There's a lot of uh, custom parts and um, fettling of, of, of the existing parts to make it all work but now that I've done it I'm really happy with the results it's given me uh, way more confidence to take some bigger drops and, and, and bigger jumps and really really hit the uh, the trails as I wanted to originally um, the, the suspension is really plush now it, it, it just uh, you know it takes those hits without bottoming out you got huge amount of travel in comparison to the original I think it comes in at around 120 millimeters of travel now so uh, it's the modifications aren't for the faint of heart but I thought I'd do a video uh, in case anybody else uh, has the tools and the enthusiasm to do this to their master instead of spending a huge amount of money on a new wheel so um, I'll take you through it so this is the new suspension linkage design I created. Um, this is designed to um, incorporate 130 millimeters of um, suspension travel um, while using the full 51 millimeters of shock travel. So this is a RockShox Monarch RL 190 by 51 shock. Um, the distance there between the eyes and the extended position is 190 and then uh, as it compresses it, it uses the full 51 millimeters of shock travel 
Um, the the reason for the 130 millimeter was was trying to replicate the S22 suspension travel. Um, I don't think I achieved the full travel, but uh, it's quite close to that. Um, the so the uh, linkage itself um, is slightly progressive over the travel, so the spring rate increases um, as the shock compresses. Um, this gives you good bottom out prevention, so the, um, the progressiveness of the air shock helps with that as well, and that's aided by the suspension travel. So what you find is, um, I think in reality, when it's most cases you're using probably 80% of the travel um, and then that last 20% only really would ever get used on a very big um, drop or hard hit. Um, the, the overall design um, was intended to be made in aluminium so um, I've actually done some FEA on that to verify that the, the strength is, is sufficient for this design. Um, I utilise the um, the old uh, spaces and things as much as possible, but they did require a few small modifications to make it all fit, as the thickness of the metal is um, slightly greater than with the original steel uh, linkages. I wanted that bit extra strength. So um, I also wanted to improve the... Um, the tolerances so the original um, bushings were very loose and they have very wide tolerance on the shafts that fit through them um, so I um, opted for the Igus um, plain bushings so they're a polymer polymer bush that you press fit into a, um, a reamed hole uh, and the um, the, the tolerances that are achieved with these are much tighter. They are uh, within their specification in terms of the loading and things like that. They're very tolerant to um, dirt and you don't have to lubricate them or anything. So they're quite a good option for this. I don't know why they don't use them as stock. Maybe they're more expensive than the, um, I think they're steel or, or with a kind of a coating. I don't know what they're made from. Uh, the stock ones but uh, these ones uh, give a much tighter fit so there's less play and uh, less knocking okay so I did some calculations to uh, work out the forces in the suspension and linkages just to check that it was going to give me something sensible when I actually made it and assembled it so uh, I'm basing the calculations on um, uh, basically 120 kilograms total weight so uh, 80 kilogram rider with a roughly 40 kilogram um, wheel so um, actually thinking about that the the weight of the motor won't come into that so it'll be somewhat less than that I don't know exactly the, the, the amount but for the sake of argument we're going to use 120 kilograms as the uh, the total weight so um, looking at the, the linkage itself um, and measuring the shock travel and the suspension travel from the CAD model and plotting them on a graph, you can see that the, um, the ratio is progressive over the travel of the uh, suspension. So um, it starts off at... Uh, a lower ratio and which ramps up over the shock travel it's not a hugely progressive um, geometry but it's much better than the um, the geometry of the existing bigode linkage um, the stock link linkage is actually I think a regressive ratio so it's it's pretty hopeless for off off-road um, suspension um, so you, when you apply that linkage uh, geometry to the um, the progressive nature of the air shock you get a, a nice progressive curve um, over the travel of the shock so we're probably aiming for a 20% sag which would be around here um, I think this assumes a 400 psi uh, shock pressure um, 
so it gives a nice progression. I, I think that the, the geometry isn't progressive enough to use a spring shock unless you use a progressive spring. Um, so I, I, I decided to stick with the air shock because you get the nice progression with the redu reduction in volume of the air chamber. So you get a nice progression at the end. So it stops you from bottoming out. So these are the parts you have to make um, uh, amongst other small bits, but uh, these are the main parts. So you've got the um, the four linkage parts, which are basically two uh, of the same design of each. Um, you need to create extended um, sliders. So basically uh, 40 millimeter 30 millimeter steel tube uh, and with some holes drilled in for the um, the, the, the handle uh, and, and other parts and then um, you need to create some new lower um, uh, battery uh, mounting parts because um, these are longer so you need to basically move the, the mounting points up um, they're the main parts. They're, these parts are all made in aluminium. They could be, uh, I CNC'd them uh, on a small mill, but they could be um, laser or, or water cut if necessary. I just cut these uh, by hand um, using a pillar drill and, and clamps and things like that. So it's not too difficult. Um, these, this is assembled with the Igus bushings pressed into place. Um, all went together quite nicely but the some of the spaces and things needed to be um, shortened slightly just to to take up the the extra width of these um, these part linkage parts so this is um, the parts assembled onto the the chassis um, went together quite nicely I did find that I had to um, machine off a small amount of the uh, the mount onto the, uh, the cross beam here or whatever it's called um, because of the, the difference in width of these um, the linkages here so uh, I think it's a couple of millimeters off um, the sides here which I used my little mill for uh, I also had to fettle out a small bit of width from the main um, casing here to, to do the same just to fit things in properly I think I used a Dremel um, it wasn't too difficult and a bit of a, and a file. Um, then these are the uh, the modified battery mounts in place. So the 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 pin the, the centers between the mount posts for the batteries are, are the same as uh, with the original. So you can see there's the extra travel uh, is here um, assembled onto the fully assembled onto the uh, the rest of the chassis and, and everything else it basically what it does is it shifts the uh, the batteries and the controller and everything up by around 50 millimeters so um, this this point here is now 50 millimeters higher than it was originally I don't find that a problem uh, with my legs because my knee is still just above this level so it, it's not uncomfortable and I feel it actually gives me better um, control of the wheel as it comes up higher it does increase the uh, uh, raises the center of gravity somewhat so stability uh, isn't improved but actually what happens is the pedals end up sagging to be a bit lower than they were so you actually get a bit of stability back there um, the the case you see here is something that I created for the before I modified the suspension um, it was to basically make the whole thing more robust and less fragile. Um, it's uh, it's mainly it's to, basically two um, nylon side panels with a TPU 3D printed case all the way around um, to give it some protection against um, you know, crashes and things like that when you're on the trails. I did modify the light to improve those as well. Got rid of the old LED strip and. Um, made these uh, in parallel so they, they still operate the same as the original stock um, but they're brighter and there's more of them um, they're also split so left and right uh, and they work quite nicely 
So one problem I had um, from increasing the travel was that the the pedals now in the fully compressed point they go much much lower than they did previously. Um, you can see here the bottom of the pedal hangers actually come within probably uh, 30 millimeters of the ground, and you can imagine if that was on a on a full hit, the the tire itself will be compressed uh, and actually expand sideways. Um, so you can see that the pedal hangers are in danger of gouging into the tire. I did test this and yes, they dig into the tire very badly. Um, it didn't completely destroy the tire, but it was worryingly damaged after a, um, a, a one run on the trails. So um, it required some modifications. Um, so the modifications I did to the pedal hanger uh, to stop it gouging into the tires and to give it a little bit of extra ground clearance um, was to basically machine off uh, the the ends of the hanger uh, and to put in a, a chamfer on the uh, inner piece. So it, it effectively splits the hanger into two pieces that you clamp onto the um, the cylinder the cylindrical. Um, slider so the um i also tapped drilled and tapped an additional hole to give it much more clamping force so you can see here i machined it all the way off to where the upgraded um battery holders are and i also uh, chamfered off the inner piece just to give it that extra ground clearance uh, sorry extra clearance to the tire so that's it really. Um, I'll put up all the um, the parts to make the suspension linkage and the upgraded battery holders and the uh, extended um, sliders uh, up on Dropbox, which there'll be a link below if you want to make it. Do it at your own risk. You stand a good chance of um, wrecking your master if you don't finish it and complete it properly. It's... Um, I can't guarantee that it will be exactly the same on yours, that the quality control of the bigode wheels is a bit to be desired and they change things along the way. So I don't know if the exact design I provided will fit your version of the master if you do choose to try and do this. So, But it, it is possible and I think with you know some mechanical understanding and um, skills to, to make the parts. Uh, it's, it's very doable and worthwhile doing. Um, all I'm really showing is that it's possible um, and some of the problems that you might find with it. Um, I think it's worth it. It's really, you know, it's made it so I don't need to buy a new wheel really. It's made my master what I wanted it for um, and I'll, I'll be using it for a lot longer than um, I probably would have done otherwise because it's uh, it's an excellent wheel with with a lot of power speed it just was lacking in the suspension and it was a bit fragile so with these upgrades um, you know it, it's a great wheel for the trails so I'll let the video play out um, with some of the the trails I've been hitting and um, good luck with your mods if you do it 